testing one two three <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Sunny and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second video in my Japanning series. Hi, if you don't know, I am going to Japan and I am making a small series of videos leading up to my trip, just sort of documenting the things I'm bringing, what I'm doing to prepare and stuff like that. Japan planning, Japanning. <laughs> you might think it's dumb, but it's been a tradition since 2019. And by tradition, I mean I did it once in 2019 and now i'm doing it again this video is going to be all about the camera that i am bringing with me to japan and vlogging it is going to be sort of a first impression overview of this camera from someone who has been vlogging for a long time but is not super tech savvy when it comes to cameras i'd say i'm above the average person considering i've been doing youtube since i was 13 years old and i have worked with like TV grade level cameras at YouTube space and stuff like that. But when it comes to my own personal equipment, I'm not really that fancy with it. As you can tell, I'm literally using my iPhone as a mic for this video because I can't figure out how to get my lav mic to work with my uh, new Canon camera that I am filming on. But this video is not about a Canon camera. This video is about this. This is the DJI Pocket 2. And you're probably looking at this and thinking, what is that? Well, actually you're probably not because if you're watching this video, you're probably looking up like reviews for this camera. But if that's not the case, this is a vlog camera with a built-in gimbal, AKA cinematic stabilization, pretty much. <laughs> you can get some really pretty shots with this camera. Let's talk about it. This is not going to be a full overview of how this camera works or anything like that. So I do just want to go over some things in the beginning that I'm not going to be going in depth with in this video. And if you want to learn more about that, there are going to be videos I'm going to recommend in the description box. But this camera has a bunch of different modes for actually using the gimbal. It has a bunch of different settings inside of it that you can mess with. I really haven't messed with it that much, so I'm not going to talk in depth on that as well as you can plug this into your phone and do a lot of stuff from your phone which i am not going to go over because i personally think that it looks stupid to have it connected to your phone it looks like this it's just bulky now i am someone who owns every single gimmicky vlog camera that has ever came out i have the one with the screen from canon that like flips up i have this camera that we're currently filming on which i don't remember i think it's like a canon d500 or something like that i have bought in every single camera that had some sort of selfie capability that was marketed towards vloggers or content creators in general because i've never found a camera that i was actually happy with there was always something annoying about it that's not to say that the dji pocket 2 doesn't have its flaws but a couple of the reasons why i picked this out is because it doesn't have the flaws that a lot of my other high quality vlog cameras have the number one thing i have to say about this camera is that it is tiny this is such a small camera and you can probably tell just by me holding it it is about the size of my iphone and it does have an extension down here that adds like a speaker and some bluetooth capabilities i believe that's what it does don't quote me on that so the actual camera is about this big this thing is tiny and it can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second, which I don't really know what that means. I just know that that is super HD. I also know that I do not use it in that mode because it fills up my memory card way too fast. <laughs> The sun just went down, so the lighting changed. I apologize. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't use fancy lighting when I'm filming. <laughs> the next thing that I love about it is that it is white. The current camera that I'm filming on is white. You know what? I'll just... You're gonna see the ugly background of my house behind it, but the camera I'm currently filming on is white. And I really do like that. I don't know, that's just an aesthetic reason, but that was on my pros and cons and why I like this camera. It does come in black, but I got it in the limited edition Sunset Creator bundle, which technically it's baby pink. Who cannot love a cute baby pink vlogging camera? <laughs> As for quality wise, this thing is so fun. And I really don't think I even have the ability in my current skill set to like utilize how cool this thing is. It has a bunch of different modes where you can like tilt and lock the like gimbal head. And you can do so much cool stuff with this cinematic wise, but also just vlogging wise, it has a really good not too wide but not too not wide angle lens built into it when i said i had pretty much every single camera i also have a gopro and the gopro is just so gopro-y you can immediately tell that you're filming on a gopro when you film on your gopro with this 
it's kind of up in the air on whether you're filming with like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera on a gimbal or if you're filming with this. I don't think people would be able to tell that you're filming on such a small compact like vlogging camera from the quality of the footage. I will put in some test footage right now of this camera uh, just that I filmed outside in my backyard and around my house so you can see like what it looks like in selfie mode as well as just like filming sh aesthetic shots of plants. I don't know, it's winter, all the plants are dead. I really don't know what I'm gonna film with it. <laughs> Another thing that you might be worried about with this camera is the mic quality. I was nervous about that too because if there's one thing that I really like is good audio, audio quality. Like the camera that I'm filming on has a fine mic but I choose to use this because I just think it sounds better having a mic a little bit closer. It sounds more authentic to like having a conversation with a person the mic in this is actually really good you do have to be careful of not covering the mic there are four separate mics on this one on the back two on the sides and one on the front but if you have an extender or a tripod on it you don't you won't really cover them um but it sounds really good this is the mic on the dji pocket 2 and this is the iphone mic that you've been hearing for the duration of this video um, I think they both sound really good. Once again, here is the DJI Pocket 2 mic, and here is the iPhone mic. I think that they're comparable. I think they both sound really good and really crisp. And just for shits and giggles, here is the quality of the mic inside my Canon camera that was triple the price of this one. I think we have a clear winner here. <laughs> don't like the mic quality of this, which I don't know. Some people are very particular about their audio. They do have Bluetooth connectable lav mics that you can buy to go with this camera, but they're kind of like very expensive. So for Mike, this definitely gets an A+. The cons, the cons, what are the cons of this camera? It's $400. That's definitely a con. Uh, for $400 more, I got this like fancy camera that I'm filming on that definitely has a lot more capabilities and a lot more versatility in what you can film with it as well. It's better for photos in my opinion. I got mine used for $295. Um, I also think the white one is a little more expensive. So if you don't care about aesthetic, go for the black one, find a cheap refurbished one on BH Photo and Video or Amazon. That's definitely the way to go. I feel like for $400, if this is the only camera you have, this probably shouldn't be the only camera that you spend your money on. You should probably get a real camera first before you get this, unless you're only going to be vlogging then go with this. Another con is there are some visual glitches that happen with this if your software is not up to date. This is something you have to plug into your phone and regularly update the software for. It doesn't have as frequent software updates anymore because it is a two year old camera at the time of filming this. But if you don't have the software update, you will get visual glitches when you are filming. It's really weird. I don't really know. I read all about it on Reddit and it's just something you have to think about when you get a camera like this, if they ever stop supporting it. And wow, my um, camera battery died on my big camera which I don't remember what I was talking about, but that leads me into my next point, which is battery life. The reason I was able to switch over and film so quickly after my battery died on my main big expensive Canon camera is because I have multiple batteries for it. So if the battery dies, I can just pop out the old one and put in a fresh one. This camera you charge with a USB-C port. So if your battery dies when you're out and about, you either have to attach it to a battery pack, like a, like a phone battery pack, you know, like that you bring camping, or your camera's just dead. <laughs> Which kind of sucks if you're someone like me who does travel vlogs where you don't come back to the hotel for hours on end, like 12 hours. This definitely won't last 12 hours if you're filming constantly. I haven't tested the full extent of the battery life because I haven't filmed a full day with it yet. I've only filmed little clips for some Instagram reels and stuff, but I definitely can tell that the battery is doesn't last that long. I'd say max, if you're not filming a lot, you could probably get eight hours out of it, but not eight hours of filming. Oh, the point I was going into before my camera battery died, the screen on this is really small. As you can probably tell, because I never take my eyes off of myself in the viewfinder, I really like to look at myself when I'm recording. It's really important to me that I know what I look like when I'm recording. I wanna make sure that I look good. This might be my own insecurities talking, but I don't like when I have a double chin on camera. And it's kind of hard to tell with this if you have a double chin. <laughs> if we're being honest, it's kind of hard to tell really what you're filming. Um, when I first started filming it, I tried to film my dog and I literally, he wasn't in the shot because I couldn't really figure out how to use the gimbal at first. Um, you can fix this by plugging it into your phone, but like I said, that just looks stupid. The last con with this is it's not just a pull out of the box, grab and go camera. There definitely is a learning curve with it with using the gimbal. 
you can just lock it. There is a lock button, so you can just lock it so that it films like a normal camera, but then why did you spend $400 for this if you're gonna do that? So you do have to kind of get used to like filming and slowing down what you're doing with this camera to give time for the camera to actually catch up with what you're doing. But I think that's a simple learning curve that most people could get over within like 24 hours of having this in their hands. So in conclusion, I'd say that this is definitely the perfect vlogging camera for a travel vlogger. It all boils down to the fact that this thing is tiny. It comes with a neck strap too, so you could literally wear it as a necklace. It even comes with a protective carrying case as if this thing was meant to be brought around places on the go, which is literally all I ask for. It's not waterproof like a GoPro, but honestly, I've filmed underwater and in water with my GoPro two times in the seven years that I've owned it, so really, I don't really care about waterproof filming. I really don't care about it being waterproof at all. Like, that's not a big deal. If it rains, I'm not gonna be whipping out my $400 vlog camera anyways. The smoothness of the filming is perfect for when you're walking and filming yourself, as well as getting beautiful pan shots of the wonderful sights that you'll be seeing when you're traveling. It makes your vlogs look so much more professional without having a professional price tag attached to your equipment. And that's really all I ask for. As I use this camera, I'm sure I will learn more about it. This is really just like a very normal person's review of this camera. <laughs> I hope that it helped some of you guys because I know when I was looking up this camera, it's all a bunch of like tech dudes using big fancy words and all the videos are like 45 minutes long. And I'm like, no, I just want to know, can I make pretty aesthetic vlogs with this? Yes, the answer is yes, you can. <laughs> and I will be using it for all of my Japan vlogs, hence why it is in this Japanning video. But anyways, guys, if this is your first time seeing one of my videos, please remember to subscribe because I am going to be uploading Japan vlog content. I leave exactly 13 days from the day of filming this. Um, by the time you're seeing it, I think I'll probably already be in Japan, which is crazy. Um, but if you have any more questions, I will definitely be more apt to answer them by the time this video goes up because I'll be using the camera more and I will try to answer any questions that you might have. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you when I see you. Bye. <laughs>